So I had this idea of doing a dramatic start by rolling the dice and then switching to the webcam, but the webcam has broken. So when I click on this, you just get a blank screen, which is a little bit awkward. What I might try and do is reuse this camera. Let's see what happens. Get a shot of not quite me. There we go. Shot from underneath me. Not really perfect, is it? Um, and slightly wonky as well. Isn't that great? So, hello. Welcome to the um, not going very well so far. Uh, continuation of my streaming of learning Haskell and live streaming it. Um, I'm going to start a new project today. Um, I'm going to write a simple dice based game um, in Haskell. Um, I think what I'll do today is I'll write something very simple and then maybe we can start to develop it and make it a bit more complex. And I'm hoping it can I can use this as a kind of basis for building a more complex system, particularly by starting with like a terminal driven game and then building a, a web server, some kind of web app, which lets you play the game, perhaps allows multiple people to play the game. Um, the game I want to start with, um, oh, not that, that, is that working? That, at least this is working. Um, the thing I want to start with is a very simple dice game called uh, Macau. And you play one dice, um, and I, I believe the rules are you you want to get as close to the score of nine as possible without exceeding it. And if you do exceed it, you're eliminated. Um, and you can roll the dice as much as you want to, as many times as you want to. Um, and you can decide when you're done. Uh, as a single player game, it's not going to be much fun. Um, I guess the idea is you have multiple people playing it. And between you, you're seeing who can get closest to the score of nine. Um, but I'm going to start with this because it's really simple. So for a single player, um, it should be really quite straightforward to implement. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to create a new project. Um, yeah, I'm just going to start from scratch, create a new project, um, and then try and get the idea of rolling dice working. Um, so I can say stack new, uh, oops, stack new uh, Macau, and I need to give it the resolver it doesn't get it right, uh, you can say LTS, I think. And they should build a new stack project for me, which is good. I'm just going to copy a file called hi.yaml. I think it's still called that, um, into this new thing I just created, which is Macau. Um, I just tells the language server that we're using stack, basically. I don't think much in that. Um, yeah, it just tells that we're using stack. And I can just go into that directory um, and I might just say stack build, stack setup, stack setup. And I go and grab anything it needs, which is nothing in this case. Um, so in theory, if I say code, <clears throat> it should open this project for me in VS Code, which is cool. Um, let just have a quick look at this. This is uh, a new empty project. It's got main.hs, it's got package.yaml. Um, I don't know why the font has gone funny. That's quite annoying. Um, it's got all the stack files it needs as well. So in theory, just give it off a second. In theory, I can go into here and I can say something like stack run. Check it's working. It should compile everything and then print out some func, which I believe is the definition of some func. Yeah, it just says print that out. Um, God, that font's really going to annoy me. I don't know why it's picking a different font for this the text content here. I'll have to look into that. Um, okay, but I'm going to use this as a kind of basis for building my dice-based game. Um, and one of the first things I need to worry about, I think, is rolling a dice, which is really just generating a random number between one and six. And to do this, uh, I found a package called random, um, which even gives an example about rolling some dice or some die. Um, and it's got this um, 
is function called uniform r and you give it to sort of min and maximum and it, it gives you back a value from um, that range. It's also got this nice unfolder with just rule. Um, I think what this does is it creates a sort of um, infinite stream of dice rules. Uh, and then you can um, just grab as many rules from that as you want to. We're not going to do that today because we're going to have one dice. We're going to be rolling it, sort of, uh, rolling it for each turn. So we'll only ever need to roll it one time. Um, this mixed gen, I think, comes from uh, the random uh, the random library, random package, and it's um, I think the forty two is just a seed into this, so it's a it makes a random number generator seeded with forty two, and it uses that. So I'm going to see if I can set that up and get it to generate a random number for me. So I think what I need to do here is go to package and tell it to add this dependency. Oh, that font is terrible. Uh, 1.2.0. And if I go down to here, I don't mean to say stack run, but anyway. Um, what's it saying? Okay. In the LTS, it has random 1.1, and I've asked it for 1.2. Um, I could say a line you are true, or I could give it this SHA, apparently. I might try that. Um, in stack.yaml how do we override the package extra depths I haven't set up yet but let's do that and we can just set it to uh, this package oops Sorry, let's try again. Grab that. Actually, copy this time. Paste it in there. So I think this is telling it to, as well as fetching all the packages it grabs from um, the result we told it, the um, whatever the LTS was set to, it will also uh, go and grab this extra dependency for me somehow. I wonder where it gets this shaft from. Because it seems a little bit precise. Um, so let's just try it and see if it works. It seemed to work. Um, so I could say stack or REPL, yes. And let's see if we have access to this. Okay, so it's not done a compiling a random package for me. Um, and we're going to try just running this, I think. I need to have a look at how this unfold works as well. Uh, so, sorry, this is called uniform R. And it's in uh, system.random. System dot oops, random dot uniform r cool it does um it does have that that's good it's just looking at the type signature so it takes a pair of a's um where a is some uniform range right I guess this is a this sort of min and max and it returns a generator and when you run the generator, when you call the generator, I think it then um, returns to you a new value 
new random values in that range and a new generator that you can use for the subsequent call. So let's see if that works. Um, so we can say uh, let r equal um, system dot random dot uniform r and we will give it a pair with a min and a max so let's say between one and six in this case because we are doing a die um, and we look at r now it is some generator um takes a generator and it returns this new pair for me so if we say r and then we give it a generator so is it what's the function called it was mixed to gen System dot random dot makes oops standard it's not going to take me is it gen and I think this makes under gen takes an argument which is the initial seed it says forty two and what's giving me back here is some random value and then the next generator um if I call it again with exactly the same generator set so forty two it should give me the same answer. Um, this is a this is the pure implementation. Uh, there's I thought there's one that uses um, dev random, but I can't see it here. There's MWC random, so that's that's maybe one that's using. Um, Maybe using tip random, I don't know. Doesn't really matter, we don't need it very random. Uh, so we can just uh, give it a different seed here and we should get a different answer coming back. And something like that. Um, but presumably, we can also say uh, we can send this to a part uh, into a pair. So we can say R prime and G is our next generator. Set to that. And we look at r prime, that should be the value whether it was four, six, I think it was. Yep. And g is a generator. So now we can roll again by calling r, but this time instead of passing in a new generator, we'll pass in what was returned from before. Um, and I guess this is the point of this unfold. <laughs> um, I wonder what the gist is for there. Um, the rule doesn't return a maybe type, so I'm kind of confused as to. I need to look at the type of this on folder. Um, but I, I'm guessing what this does is it takes the output from this and turns it into a list and then lets you call it uh, multiple times because this is taking a generator and returns a list from that. Um, is on folder part of prelude? No. Uh, is it part of uh, system at random? Uh, no more than that. Where did this come from? Hmm, where is this? Oops. This is unfold come from. I wonder. Let's see if we can find it. Let's search for unfold or there's a list. Okay. And it So what does it take here? Okay, so fold will take a list and uh, reduce it down to a value. Unfold takes a value and expands out to a list. Um, it takes an element and runs nothing if it's done. Okay. Or just if there's a value. Okay. And it takes an initial B, 
and returns a pair of these things. So, um, I'm just wondering what uh, what this pair is and what B is. So, it takes a function that goes from an initial value B into okay maybe a b and i guess that b gets updated every time it's called okay so to turn um where are we there are rules to turn this uh into well this is a function of g to a g and what it wants is a function from g to maybe a g. So I guess this is why you're calling just attached to it. So if I say just exactly what it says, so I'm going to set rules to be um, data dot list dot unfolder, right unfold, and it's going to take just apply to R okay and then first time we call rules we pass in um, the initial generator so what G hang around we'll just use G because I have that so I can say uh, rules G and it should give me back oops shouldn't have done that there. It gives me back an infinite list, um, so that's why the example says take 10 from that. In our case, we can just call head, I think. We, oh, okay, we can call head, but that's not actually much use to us. Um, what we really want to do is split it into so the head and tail. Um, and then use the tail for our next call. So a function given a list of A's returns to me an A it's a pair of A and list of A something like that Not sure this is what I want. Uncons. Okay, well, give me maybe version of that. I guess that makes sense. Oops. So if I go here and say it's dot list dot uncons. Um, apply to rules G. Oh no. Just forever. Okay, that's not what I want at all. Okay, I'm not going to use this fancy unfold. I'm going to manually keep track of the generator as we go in our program. Okay, so let's try writing some code now. So now I'm going to import um, system.random and from that we're going to pull in a uniform R and it was also make standard generator um, okay so we can write a function, I'm going to write a new function called role and what will we give it here? We'll give it a generator. Uh, what was the type of the generator? It was a random gen G. Uh, 
and we'll give it a G and it will return a number to us. Um, in this case, we could probably just return an integer. Um, I pull in random gen. Okay, and now I need to define role. So what we're going to do, it's going to take um, it's going to call uniform R with our pair, which is between one and six, and apply G to it as well. Uh, it can't. Okay, we get a G back. Okay, so we could return a generator as well, I guess. Oh, yeah, we'll return G there. We don't need to pass it explicitly, I'll just apply it. Um, okay, so far that's not particularly helpful, but. Just reload for a second. We can call rule. I will not scope rule. Oh, uh, it's not exported from lib. And we haven't imported it, but that might be okay. Yeah, so I say rule now. That's cool. Um, so we haven't given it an initial generator, so we can say mc um, gen 15, doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, data dot, oh, system dot random. Ah, okay, it gives us back a value in the next random generator. We haven't really achieve very much. We've just defined uniform R and given it a fixed um, a fixed range, I guess. Um, so what I might do is mix this with state and I think this is what it was showing beneath. Um, so I can use stateful uniform M and step forward uniform RM. What the difference is? So you can use uniform RM. We do our initial um, generator still. And then we call run state gen, pass in the initial generator. And then the function that we want. Okay, and run state gen, I'm guessing. Um, we could also have a form where it returns the new state. Is it just run state? Um, run state gen. So you give a generator, you give it something, it goes from generator to a new state, and then oh, it's a new state and the value and it returns value in a new state. Sorry, the value in a new generator. So we pull in this. I guess Random M is non-uniform version. Um, okay, so let's try to go back to here. So we'll redefine role to be this uniform RM. 
I'm going to call something from Desert Random that's stable. Um, we'll define this to be from RM. And oh, what's the types for this? So uniform RM goes from stateful gen. So it's not random gen, it's stateful gen, I believe. I'll just change that as well. Uh, step for generator G GM takes a G and returns that, is that right? Let me ignore this for oh, no. Can I do system that random dot internal uniform range int g uniform rm it still takes a pair wonder what it's not oh, it's problem with here so it, the type that it returned is m word oh it doesn't return g okay um Right, I guess there's a point of being stateful is that you don't need to return and keep track of G, you just give it an initial generator and it handles the rest. So reload that. And then if you say then a system dot random dot stateful dot run What's the one I want to use? Run state gen. And that takes a generator, so we can pass in the G that we already have, I think. Um, and it takes in something that goes from stateful gen M G to a new state. So I think that's the type of our rule function. Okay. So let G be uh, system dot random dot uh, mixed to gen number. There we go. So it now returns what looked like the same thing. I'm not sure how that's useful actually. Um, we might as well do it in a pure way in this case because we can't then call it again uh, without destructuring this and getting this generator out. So we might as well do it in a stateful, sorry, in a pure way. Uh, having the state there doesn't really help us. Uh, what we might do though is what we might do is keep track of the state ourselves. Well, let's say let me just set this back to where it was. So that took a random gen. Random gen, the same thing here. And there's no M in this case, and it doesn't return an M, it returns an int and the G, whatever the G is. And we're going to call it uniform R. So just rid of that, grab our initial G, and then we'll call roll G. Okay, back to where we were. So, um, 
This one's going to call play, and it's going to take an initial generator. Um, what are we going to do with that? We'll take the generator and what will we return? What do I want this to do? I want it to roll a dice and then wait for these to do something. So I guess it's going to be under IO. Um, and it's going to return um, nothing, I guess. Like it's just going to. Hmm. What do I want here? I want I want a function where it keeps track of this G for me, essentially. So I can call it multiple times and it'll say um, it'll remember the G between calls. But I'm going to do that with state, then I need to do it in a monadic way. And that doesn't really help for this building up bit by bit. Um, maybe it's the right answer though, I don't know. It just feels like there's something simpler I could do here. Um, I just ignore the ruling for a second. So we could say, Play is, and then we can say puts for Lin, uh, just prompt the user to do something. And then we'll say command, this is a bit fancy actually, we'll, I was going to say something like um, get strulin, get stra. get line, wait for the user to hit return, basically. Um, and then what do we do? We will roll. So we can let R and G be roll of so let's say G prime is a rule of G. So we need to get G from somewhere. So initially, let's just say that G equal mix to gen on a generator of C with that for no particular reason. We now have R and G. Um, hmm. We do now. So we can say, I'm going to say case. R. So for R, we need to keep track of the total we had um, and see if it's greater than nine. Uh, so we need the previous total. Uh, so let's call this A for now. And then we can say something like if R plus A greater than uh, 9, in this case is our total, then put Strelin, no, <laughs> um, you lose. Else, um, what else do we do then? So we can say otherwise play with R plus A. A 
100%. Okay. Variable nonce go A. I wonder why we can't get to this A to get up here. Um, I think a lot of this is a bit nonsense. Let's break some of this stuff out. So, um, game over. We'll go from. I'm going to start to use some state here because I just end up tracking it myself. So, um, I'm going to game. I'm going to find the game state. And we'll create a record for this, I think. How do you create a record? Um, correct syntax? I can't remember. Uh, so what are we going to track now? We're going to track the total. Just type int. And we'll also track the generator of type random gen. So let's call it G a comma. I'm trying to save it. Nothing works very well because there's a syntax error. Um, let me just quickly look up the syntax for Haskell records. Which obviously I've done before. Keep going to do it. And it's actually, so we've got data, type name, constructor, braces, and then the types inside. Okay, so that should be all right. Um, Expecting one more arguments to run gen. So what? What type was this? Hey Dan, good to see you. Welcome to um the middle of me struggling for some Haskell. I'm trying to recall what the type of the generator is. So um. Let's do it there. So if we just bring that up for seconds. What's the type of mixed standard generator? It's in system.random. So this is an int to system.random.internal.studgen. So can I then just use that type? I import that explicitly from system dot random oops dot internal I'll we'll just pull in stigen. Yes, could I pull it in just from random actually put it into fish inside internal? Apparently yes, okay. Okay, so we can track several games to go along, so this is a total we've rolled so far. And this G is the generator we're going to use. Um, let me get rid of some funk. Oh no, I won't get rid of it yet because it's used by some other in some other places. Let me just pop at the end of the file so I can forget about it. Okay. So we have a game state, and then we can have something called roll which goes from I mean you could say it goes from game state to um, game state
So rule of G, we can say something like um, a new role, so a new value, new dice value is that And once we have our new dice value, then we can return a new game state. So we can say something like G, but we're going to update. Well, this is a pair. Sorry, we're going to get this and G prime. So G can be um, the, the original G we had. And I think we can modify it by saying something like... Um, Total is um, total is whatever it was before. So we can say something. I think you can say total g. So that's, that's our previous total plus the new role. Okay, let me just check my syntax for records so I'll update them. Um, da, 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 da. So I don't say G here, do I? I can say. Oh, there's a way of just updating a single thing. I forget what it is. Record updates. So I should be able to, I just need to drop percentage out, I think. Does that work? No. Does that work? Just out of curiosity. That seems to be okay. So we could say something like G total equals and then the total of G in fact let's say new total um, and the I've used G too many times here it's getting a bit annoying that's probably part of the reason for my syntax error so we have um, function called g and I was then redefining g it didn't help so let's call it gen doesn't matter it doesn't work um, uh, let me make this not broken I'm going to get rid of play for a second. So we still have a rule which goes from G to G, and we have our game state which I need to export as well. Um, I just want to play with this a little bit from the REPL, see if I can work out what I'm doing. So this game state is thing. Not in scope. Um, let's export all of it. <laughs> Okay, so game state uh, takes a total and oops, a total and a generator. I can just leave the generator off. No, so we can say let uh, GS is that. Uh, I might as well find the generator here. So the generator is. System dot random dot uh, mix the gen and we give it some initial value so on four why not so we say totally gs we can and can we say the generator from gs yep now can we say gs 
but we'll change the total to be seven. Uh, GS prime. We say the total of GS prime minus seven. Okay, so that looks okay. So I wonder what I was doing wrong here. So can we take, oops, I'll write it for G and then modify it and we'll say total equals seven. That seems to be okay. In total. Um, where new total is seven. But we'll make that a bit more exciting in a second. Um, and the generator is the new generator. Um, okay, so new gen. So we can just say uh, the second of this pair, which is uh, the result of rolling. So we can say now R is equal to uh, uniform R. I will roll some number between one and six. We can find any numbers. And so this first of R, not quite. Okay, so the type of uniform R is actually some, a function that takes a generator and returns the pair that I'm after. So I need to give it a generator as well. But we can do that by taking the generator that's currently inside G. Okay, um, can I rename this? Will it let me? No, I have no handy rename thing. Um, I just want to say GS for game state. Okay, so now I should have something where I create an initial game state. I then um, create initial game state. I call this with the game state and it should give me back the updated total and the new state. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll create some initial game state and then we'll call roll. Oh, it's going to be annoying. If I call roll on GS, it's going to say can't show it. So I just say deriving show. No, yeah, we're having show. I really like that. So get our game state, roll for our game state. It's okay. So it's rule of three here, gives it back a new generator. Um, if I call it again, it should be pure. Yeah, it does the same thing. So we can then say um, something like uh, GS prime is equal to that. We'll say let GS prime be equal to that. Um, to look at what GS prime is, okay. And then we can roll on our new state. Doesn't seem to have done anything. It's possible. Not can roll a zero. It's not a valid number to one and six. Hmm. So new total, oh, it's just the first of R. It should actually be the total of G plus that uh, total of the game state plus whatever new rule was. Okay, so reload that. Um, set up our initial game state. Roll it. It gives 
I'm not sure why it's not giving us the new total. Um, oh, it's because I asked to show the initial state, sorry. Yeah, so the first rule is still here. It's like this, is by, this value 3 is what we expect. So we rule it again. Okay, I rolled a 3 again, coincidentally, this time. I hope it's coincidentally. It's not just always ruling 3s. Uh, so I'll let that, and then we'll try rolling it again. Cool, we rolled a 2 that time. So then can we say something like um, data.list Actually, we won't use data.list. Let's use state properly. So, in theory, I think we can import um, Where does state come from? Is it like control at monad at state? State. I think that's what I want. Um, and that should give us state, a game state. Maybe singular. Not in scope. Okay. So let me just see if I can find out how to do state. Uh, control dot. Monad dot. It's not st. It's state. <laughs> um. Control one that state is the one I wanted. I don't really want to go and read a paper about higher order polymorphism. Um. However, this looks like the one I want, so um, so inside I can provide a do block and inside I can use get put and state. I probably want to use state so it does a what do I actually Embed a simple state action into the monad. So it takes something that goes from state to new value in state. No, I don't know what S is here, sorry. Oh, S is, S is my game state. So it goes from game state to new value in game state. So S to AS, does that match the type I gave it? No, it's not. Mm -hmm. um, this is close to what I have. Are there any helpful things on the state in this file. For example, so this is what I want to do, just to see. Okay. So state that takes, is this an int and returns an int? No. State that contains an int and the function also returns the int. Um, do you have anything better? <laughs> let's try. Well, first of all, let's try importing the right module so it's state. It's probably going to complain that I need to. Uh, control monad state is the right monad. Control monad state, because it says it's part of 
somewhere it's the most part of it, is MTS, MTL. So I think um, I'm going to go down here and say import. Oh, I can fill in that state. It's going to tell me that I need to add package MTL, which handily it tells me what I need to add. So we're going to here. I can say add MTL. Um, I'd probably say something like greater than or equal to 2.2 um, and less than 3. I don't even know what versions I want here. Um, let me just bring up the REPL again. It should now set up MTL for me. Okay, this is syntax error which doesn't help. But I can at least in this case say import uh, control.modedit state. Cool. Uh, which means I can go back to here and my library and now we can import it. Okay, so we're not going to return anything. And the definition of this is going to be a bit different. So we can say rule. Um, S. The their example look like. Um, we don't need to reference S, do we? We can just because we go straight into the do block, so we can say something like um, the game state. We can now get out by calling get. Might as well pass it in here and make it explicit so we can say get s. So we now have a game state. And then we want to put game state. Oops, we're going to do this modifications before. In fact, let's do that. So we're going to put a modified game state. Um, is that indentation wrong? Right, what's wrong here? So, no, that didn't help. Okay, so we should be able to call get on the state we're given to get the game state out of it. Is that right? Um, that looks very similar to what we had before. Maybe I don't pass S in directly. Okay, the game there. Um, Again, put it, but we can't reference GS in our where, I don't think. So we could say something horrible like let R equal this. Um, and let Oops, that right. if we knew that was just destructure, couldn't we? We could say our new value and our new generator. Our new gen. I'm not sure I can destructure it like that. Could 
Okay, it's called second on um, R. Yeah, I can. Okay. So now we have something. <laughs> you give it an initial state. We can grab the fight of it. We can roll the dice and then we put new state back in again. And then if we go back to state monad, we have exact state, but there's another thing which we might want, um, which is a val state. Uh, evaluate it and return the final value discarding the final state. That's not what we want because we're not returning. Oh, we could return a value as well. So we could return an int here. And then we could just say something like pure mutable. Okay, so then what we could say is reload that for a second. Uh, it was eval state t shouldn't need the t version here we go eval state eval state takes a state passing computation execute which is our run a roll sorry so can we say well state um Not sure it's going to help actually. So we call eval state uh, roll and then the initial value, so the constructed game state. Where the total is equal to zero and the generator is equal to uh, system.random. Starts uh, mixed to run, mixed to gen, sorry, and then some number. And then, cool. Well, coolish. It's rolled once, but that's all. And then return the value it rolled. Um, can I make it roll twice? Um, I'm not sure I really can here. Well, type of real state is staying as to A. Um, Whereas run state will give it back to me. I'm kind of thinking we could just say just, but we could recur it here, but that's not super helpful, I don't think. Um, do you know what? I spent over an hour on this. It's not going particularly well. Um, what I'm going to do is call it a night here. I haven't got very far. Like I can generate a random number, but I can't easily generate a random number and then use that generator to, to generate a new random number or a new total. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll come back to this next week and I might read up a little bit on state mode in the interim. Yeah, cool. So yeah, I'm just going to leave it there uh, and we'll come back to it next week. Cool. Thank you for watching if you're still here, Dan. Um, but yeah, maybe see some of you next week. Bye.